One of the most important and sometimes one of the most neglected tasks uh, that needs to happen regarding the formation and, and the sort of the care and feeding of teams is this idea of being mindful about uh, the process by which you're formed, about the processes which a team will follow in order to reach their goals, and sort of in real time being able to reflect on the actual process in the room, uh, if it's not in a room, in, in the virtual uh, the virtual room uh, and being able to reflect back about what's working, what's not working, what needs to happen. I also think that, that there are a lot of assumptions uh, about how we're going to work together that, that often aren't spoken to. So I think this idea of being mindful at every stage of a team's process is, is quite important and mindful is just another way of saying being thoughtful, being aware, keeping our awareness open to what's actually happening and who is engaged, who's not engaged, and are we doing what we say we are doing? Are we focusing on the things that are important, that we say are important? So I think what happens in a lot of teams is that there's sort of a, a combination of enthusiasm and trepidation when we're entering into them. Um, with this feeling of, oh, this, you know, we're going to really solve this problem, this is going to change everything, this idea of collaborating. Uh, and then uh, there isn't a whole lot of attention sometimes put into really thinking about how that will happen and people fall into patterns. And we do that in, a, in an inner way, in an internal way. We, we do that in terms of uh, how each of us behaves in a team generally if we're not paying attention. Um, and we do that in external ways as well. So we might make up a bunch of team norms about how we communicate, about whether there's a leader, who's the leader, how, what, what scope, uh, what kind of tasks that leader is responsible for, what kind of tasks the rest of us are responsible for. We might make a whole lot of kind of uh, initial um, uh, rules about that initial statements about that, but often what happens is that um, things sort of, you know, entropy takes over and things revert back to how I usually behave in a group. So if I'm someone that takes charge, I might just, just go ahead and take charge, particularly if there's a vacuum. So I think what needs, what, what can be more useful for teams is this idea of being very thoughtful, both at the outset, about who's on the team, what each person brings to the table, um, what kind of diversity and richness, uh, what kind of uh, expertise, task, process, process is also an expertise, having someone who, who can be helpful in, in the processing of what's happening in the team and who can reflect back to the team. It's tempting also, particularly with ad hoc teams and teams that aren't going to be working together forever and ever, to skip the piece about getting to know who your teammates are, you know, because after all, we all have limited time. But I think attention to that part of the process, even if it's small attention to that part of the process, as in sharing some information with each other, as in making sure that there is time for check-ins or some sort of icebreakers or, you know, in, in some teams, you know, having off-sites, having team building. I mean, people don't just do this because we all need a break and it's fun. There is a real reason for getting to know the people you're working with and that is that same idea of building relationship with people so that when things get tough, uh, you know that there is sort of a, a, a positive regard that's been established within the team. Again, becoming more and more difficult as we experience quicker, faster, fewer resources, virtual teams, but I still think it bears paying attention to. And creating a mindful set of processes that is a living kind of document. It's not just something that we say we're going to do and then we all sort of do what we do anyway. That is, follow these implicit norms, which is sort of what's not written down, but what people do because that's what they're comfortable doing in groups. I think we need to pay attention to inclusion and exclusion. 
I certainly think we need to pay attention to the norms around how we communicate with each other on teams and whether we're asking people to be really present when they're present or whether we have a certain tolerance for people multitasking and being sort of there for their little piece as opposed to for the group process. I think you lose a lot of richness in teamwork when you don't ask people to be present and engaged. And I think some people get disenchanted and disenfranchised if there's not attention to that process. So then you have to ask yourself, well, why are we having a team anyway, and why is this person on the team? So I think, I think rather than sort of let things get to that point, it makes sense at each step throughout the team process to be paying attention to that process, to have the, the way we pay attention to them is we create some rituals around them. So we create rituals around checking in with each other. We create rituals around how we share information. At team meetings, between team meetings, um, if we're mindful about those things, uh, we tend to create teams that actually waste less time and contribute more and are able to work I think more effectively and more efficiently toward their goals. You know, a common sort of complaint or defense about why people don't do these things is that we don't have time. You know, we don't have time. Um, and I would suggest that in the end you save time if you attend to some of these, these crucial issues.